Hello and welcome to my deep guide and the big books guide. The tablet itself holds a lot of options but they can be actually sometimes hidden, difficult to find, so the aim of this entire guide and the playlist is to help you get the maximum out of your device. One of the very important concepts that you need to get a handle on and grasp of regarding uh, Android platform, and in this case, the books platform, is that it is at its core a multitasking operating system, which means that if you're writing in your notebook and then you switch to library and then you open up a document and then you continue reading and then you go back maybe to the notebook or uh, I don't know, file operations or maybe your Spotify or something else, it doesn't mean that it closes down any of those applications in the background. So let's say that I'm writing my notes in this notebook and these notes are basically related to a document that I'm reading in the reader or on a website article or maybe Kindle or Kobo book or whatever it may be. What users usually do who are new to an Android platform in a situation like this is when they want to switch from uh, one app or one mode to another is they would go back and then they would go to the library and then they would go to yeah books wherever this may be and then finally open up their uh, document that they want to be in. Now that's not necessary to do like that. Um, there is a far easier way of doing these things and that's where multitasking functionality comes into play. So it can be a little bit confusing for some but I believe that it's very very easy if you know what's happening and how to actually use it. Plus if you keep it organized then it can become a tool rather than a nuisance. So um, let's just go back. First things first, how do you access multitasking? First is uh, obvious by the pull down menu, this little square icon here, that is your multitasking menu. And basically this is our, all of the apps that are currently still accessible in the device's RAM. As you can see, you are not limited to nine apps running simultaneously. On the contrary, there can be many, many more. More apps you have, more memory it will consume. So in this case, at the moment with these two, how am I, 11 apps uh, running in the background, I still have 1.5 gigabytes free of memory in the system. However, Android will automatically shut down some of them uh, as your working progress. So it will basically keep the most recently used and most frequently used apps while you were working. You go out of the multitasking menu by hitting the back icon here. Now, while this is perfectly fine, and this is basically how I tend to use it, um, there is a different way of actually making a gesture shortcut to your multitasking, and that's something that we learned in one of the previous lessons. So if you go to uh, more settings and then to gesture manager, you can see that in this example, just for accessibility sake, I've made that my left up gesture is going to be multitasking switching. All right, so that's how you access multitask. Now, I would like to show like a practical use case scenario of something like this. So for example, let's say that I am in NeoReader and that I'm reading a document here and I'm marking things, but maybe I don't want to mark on the margins here or anything like that. Maybe I just want to keep a notebook to the side uh, without using the split screen mode of the reader or anything like that, and then basically just take down notes. If I use multitask switching or functionality and the gesture control here, then the operation of switching between different apps or modes boils down to one gesture to access this whole thing, picking up the next one and continuing my notes, right? When I'm done with taking up notes, I can just go back into the reader and continue reading what I was reading. So that's one of the general type of uh, use case scenarios, though you can achieve a similar type of result using different uh, 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 functionalities of the, the book's device, especially when we're talking about split screen functionality, then you can do these things. However, in split screen, it does tend to take up real estate, right? So it's smaller 
amount of room for writing, smaller amount from reading and everything like that. So it's reasonable to assume that there will be situations where you don't want to sacrifice the screen real estate for the convenience of easily switching between different modes. And that's when I actually use this quite a lot. Yes, split screen functionality is great and we're gonna definitely cover that. And there are certainly situations where it works brilliantly, but there are also situations when this kind of functionality is more important. So what I wanted to show is that the multitasking functionality, if you use it in a mindful way, it can uh, organically scale up to a point. So it doesn't matter if you're going to use it for uh, something as simple as switching between a document and your notes, which is something that I actually use quite a lot and it's very, very practical, but you can actually expand it to a little bit further. So maybe you want to also take your audio notes as I've shown or maybe you can also add some let's uh, go here keep notes so it really really depends on what type of use case scenario you want to have however keep in mind that the more apps you have more RAM it will consume as I already said and uh, also keep in mind that other third-party uh, apps some of them are not controlled, not optimized or anything like that. And it can happen that if you have a huge array of background active or demanding third party apps, uh, that they can suck out RAM unnecessarily, which will also suck out the battery unnecessarily and all that kind of stuff. So that leads me into the uh, final part of multitask switching or functionality, which is multitask management. So that's something that's very, very important to kind of keep in mind and to be mindful about. And I guarantee you that if you do it on a daily basis or you make it part of your routine, your device is going to run smoother and your battery is going to last longer. So let's say that you're in a situation where you're reading and taking notes, but you forgot that in the meantime, you were doing a lot of things and checking stuff out. So it's a very good idea to usually occasionally during the day, just swipe up or get to the multitask switcher to check out what kind of garbage is running in the background, basically, and do a little bit of a cleanup. Now, there's two ways that we can do a cleanup. Uh, one is an individual thing. Once I get into my multi-tax uh, switcher, then I can see, oh, well, I'm not using this one, this one, and this one calculator I might need, but this I really don't want. So this is actually fine. And then I can just exit and go go about my business. So that's one way of selectively doing things. However, you also have this option of using the brush here, which is basically cache cleanup. And what that's gonna do is gonna shut down all background apps and flush them out of RAM. So once I do this, it's just gonna do brush released all of the stuff. Now, none of them were actually using any RAM, but these guys are now clean. So. Your, the state of the tablet is much, much cleaner. And this type of uh, multitask awareness and management is, I believe, a very useful and practical habit to build and have when working with any Android device, books, devices included. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you've learned something new. If you did, please subscribe and like the video and ding the notification bell thingy to get notified when the new videos are coming out and when the new Big Books Guide chapters are coming out because they will be coming. There's lots more coming. Also, be sure to check back regularly on the Big Books uh, playlist so that you can, yeah, browse the content and find the answer that you might be looking for there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.